Welcome. Welcome to this talk on compression wave impacting moored vessel on its physical modeling. I will acknowledge here the contribution of two of my famous students on our technical staff. My name is Hubert Chanson, and I'm working at the University of Queensland in Brisbane, Australia, on the eastern coast of the Australian continent. The original motivation of this work was to gain a greater understanding of the impact of tidal bar on infrastructure and shipping navigation. Impact that can be both positive with successful inland navigation, but also negative with a number of tragedy on damage to infrastructure. While it is also acknowledged that there have been some myths, in particular the myth that the daughter of the French poet Victor Hugo would have been drawn in a tidal bar, which is untrue. On the positive, in recent time, barge have been carrying Airbus A380 components on the D River and on the Garonne River. In both cases, using tidal bar induced currents to assist the fluvial navigation. For example, in the Garonne River, top photograph, the barge will follow the tidal bar within a couple of minutes. And in doing so, using the tidal bar induced current will save fuel within nearly a factor of five. But on the other hand, tidal bar have been well known for their adverse and tragic impact, as illustrated, for example, on the bottom right by this gravure, this sinister gravure of the tidal bar of the Seine River. And of course, there, we need to acknowledge analogies, analogy with tsunami wave, such as experience in 2004 and 2011, but also impact on flood wave. And recently, uh, there have been an accident in the port of Brisbane. Least we forget, this video illustrates, for example, the impact of the Toku 2011 tsunami. And we see here a fishing boat trying to negotiate the arrival of the tsunami wave. So the focus today is on the impact of tidal bar on the load on moored vessels. This photograph is a classical illustration of a breaking tidal bar. I took this uh, photograph on the data we are based upon observation together with Chinese colleagues we did at the time of the photograph. And on the right, we see here some of the illustration of the impact on the bottom a tidal bar passing along a jetties and on above a tidal bar impacting on the sluice system. On the application are beyond tidal bar and are also relevant to the impact of flash flood wave, tsunami bar, sloshing in bulkhead here, and overtopping of green water on offshore platform, for example. The work was done physically in laboratory based upon the fraud similitude in a 23 meter long frame with a test section. 19 meter long and 0 0.5 meter wide. The breaking bar was generated by the fast closing of a downstream tenter gate. On this movie, replay at one eighth of the speed on the bottom right, illustrates the rapid closing of the gate within less than 150 milliseconds in such a manner that the closure time had no impact on the propagation of the bar. And we use a series of equipment and instrumentations. We tested two vessels, a caisson on the top right and a barge model on the bottom right. Both were suspended immediately above the initial water level. And we focus on the impact of the breaking bar on the vessel. The experimental flow condition corresponded to a bar fraud number from 2.4 to 2.6, and we tested different conditions corresponding to Reynolds number within 10 to the 5 to 2, 10 to the 5. And the tests were repeated for both mode vessel types. First of all, immediately prior to the impact, we observed the 
breaking bar roller with intense turbulence, highly fluctuating process and very strong roller aeration. This graph here illustrated an optical flow analysis of the vorticity in the bar front immediately prior to the impact on one of the models. First, let's look at the impact on a Kesson model. You see here, it's a replay at one eighth of the speed. If we replay, we will see a horizontal, an initial horizontal motion of the caisson, followed by a uplifting on the downstream end, on a downward tilt before the entire structure is uplifted by buoyancy. So overall, for all the investigated flow condition, we tended to observe always the same impact process, an initial horizontal thrust with an increasing acceleration over the first second, followed by a downward pitch on an upward motion of the downstream end, and ultimately the entire structure being uplifted by buoyancy. With the batch model, it was different. Again, let's look at the movie, replay at one eighth of the normal speed, side view. So this time, top view. And here, one of the key observations is that basically the barge model is going to ride at the top surface of the roller. This last illustration is a time lapse of SLR photographs, so each frame is 24 megapixel, and it is replayed at roughly a third of the real time. This is initial impact, and very quickly, the batch model riding at the surface of the roller. I'll just replace this briefly. So overall, the impact of the bar on the barge was characterized by an initial horizontal thrust, followed by the bar riding the surface of the roller. I would note that initially we did some tests without swimming ends, basically blunt end of the barge model, and the barge was completely submerged by the bar. Thus, we believe that the swimming ends were critical to ensure that the barge will be able to ride above the bar roller. For a limited type of flow condition, we successfully track the motion of the vessel using movie at 100 frames per second, focusing on the corner of the models. And the experiments were repeated five times for both vessel models to be able to perform some ensemble statistics. Looking at the instantaneous vessel celerity, it was typically within 0 to 0 0.2 meter per second, which is much less than the bar celerity of 0 0.5, 0 0.7, sorry, meter per second. Further, the vessel velocity fluctuation were much smaller than the bar celerity fluctuation measured in a previous study. The maximum ensemble median vessel acceleration Range from three to four meters per second square, but we observe a large instantaneous acceleration and acceleration fluctuations, which might be linked with limitation of the current setup, particularly in terms of temporal and spatial resolution, not to mention optical artifacts. This is work in progress, and more work is clearly needed there. 
So the focus here has been on the impact of compression wave on moored vessel, which could be relevant to the impact of tidal bore, storm surge bore, tsunami bore, flood wave, Sudan dam release on navigation infrastructure. Flood modeling was conducted in a large size section with two different moored vessels, highlighting different response between caisson and barge model. The instantaneous vessel celerity was always much less than the bore celerity, while the ensemble median acceleration was typically less than 0.5 g. Thank you very much.